I didn't know I was big. I just knew that I was not small. And so, <laughs> I don't know, like big is big, but not small is not small. It's very different. This is my friend Abraham. We met way back in 2017 at a Cuban salsa class. He's decided to embark on a weight loss journey and he's letting me document his experience in hopes to help others. Pre-diabetic, which is not crazy. I thought I was already diabetic because my heaviest was 385, I think. So doctor prescribed these drugs. You know, I get four doses, their injections, weekly injections, like EpiPens, like, you know, bah, and then it just goes away. Same thing. Uh, it takes like two seconds and I'm like, I don't even feel it. He's talking about ZepBound. ZepBound is the brand name for the drug Terzepatide. It's an injectable medication that's been FDA approved specifically for weight loss that patients take once a week. It works by mimicking the two hormones, GLP-1 and GIP, that are naturally made in our bodies. These two gut hormones are responsible for making us feel full, improve insulin sensitivity, and delay gastric emptying, or when food leaves our stomachs for our intestines. My family comes from Guatemala. They're indigenous in poverty. So when you get here, it's poverty mindset. So access to food is like, now we can just buy a bunch of stuff. You know, things that were like simple stuff, like cereal and milk. It meant like, there's money, there's food, and if we eat, that means we're doing good. Growing up, I was very aware of being a big kid, but it was never a problem. I was called gordito a lot. Oh, el gordito. That's endearing. I understood that that was in part, you know, my weight, but there was another part that I understood that it was like also kind of a cute kid thing. Well, my, mom, my mom was still around. Uh, I had a pediatrician. He did tell me when I was, uh, I don't know, I forgot how old, that he was like, if you keep eating like this, you might not live past 25. Or he told my mom that. But that was like, years ago and so after that i never visited a doctor never felt the urgency to see a doctor for anything growing up there was this idea that you only go to the hospital when someone's dying or when someone's being born there's no like i'm going to a doctor for a checkup i think my mom tried but ultimately she got sick and so this we're back at this place of like we're in the hospital because my mom needs to stay alive you know there was no real knowledge on something like preventative medicine you know like preparing your health for long-term living. This year entering this mindset, I should really take care of myself and kind of break that cycle of our relationship with like preventative medicine and my family's relationship with, you know, what the hospital means. And I think that's why I'm on this journey of getting my health correct. Abe and his family aren't the only ones that struggle with healthcare avoidance. Many immigrant families struggle with communication barriers, health insurance, discrimination, or citizenship. In a Pew Research Center survey in 2022, a third of Hispanic adults say they've had to speak up to get the proper care when dealing with doctors or other healthcare providers. About eight in 10 Hispanic adults prefer to see a Spanish-speaking healthcare provider, underscoring the potential for communication issues in receiving medical care. It comes to no surprise that optimal health isn't top of mind when navigating the healthcare system, as people are merely trying to be considered and understood. Today, I weigh fully pooped, naked, uh, 325.8. It's buying me time, yes, I'm losing weight fast, so it's a guaranteed weight loss, but I think it's the responsibility of developing positive habits, right? And assuming a new eating identity. Like if my wardrobe's not gonna be the same, the way it should be the same. So a lot of people were asking me, is it unhealthy? And my response is, it's unhealthy to be 385 pounds at the age of 27. I mean, yeah, I want to be active, I want to play basketball, I want to be able to like, you know, be like, man, I made a slice of pizza today and eat one and be like, that was enough. You know, like, I would call it like fat people anxiety. Um, like you have the, the need to eat. Like you get hungry, okay, I have to eat. Everything needs to stop for me to eat. You go to dinner, let's stop on the way home. Let's get something on the way home. Like something to watch a movie later. It eliminates all of that. It's like, okay, you eat half of your normal meal and then you're done for the day. And so a lot of that buys you time to evaluate what you used to eat. There's definitely programs that I need to follow. You know, there's things I need to learn. And so, you know, I could look for the information. I could try to find the information, but I'd rather like somebody evaluate my goal, evaluate my habits, evaluate my cultural habits, and then build me a plan that makes sense for me. 
In 2013, the American Medical Association recognized obesity as a disease, but there's ongoing debate among stakeholders in health and obesity policy. An author manuscript published in 2017 states, a widely accepted and scientifically applicable definition of a disease is lacking and that the determination of what is a disease is more of a social and policy determination than it is a scientific determination. Despite recognizing obesity as a disease, the trend in public perception that obesity is a personal problem of bad choices has only declined modestly. I don't have hopes and dreams. I do have fears, though. I do have fears that I'm going to change because I like who I am. I like that I'm a very caring person. I like that I'm a very, I like to demonstrate that I love people, I care for people, I care for people. I like to demonstrate that uh, out of generosity, but I think there's a little bit of that tied to, that's my personality as somebody who's big. So I'm doing a lot of brain and heel work on making sure that is who I am without, with or without the weight. Weight loss has to be a very healing thing. It has to be a very like, okay, my relationship with food is because of X, Y, and Z trauma, right? Every big person would tell you, skinny people who've never been big can't tell you your experience losing weight. I think you and I can connect. I think you will see yourself in me and I will see myself in you. And I think together, you know, we could grow, we could heal, we could get small, we could dance, and we could do all these things and I hope that we can identify, you know. Like and subscribe. Ralph Lauren, if, you know, if you're watching right here. Uh, Nike, make bigger sizes. But right here, you feel me? Uh, Uniqlo, why are your sizes, size, size guys so weird? Really cool socks though, if you wanted to sponsor me. I feel like your socks. Um, yeah, bow. <laughs> Please like, subscribe. And if you have a loved one or friend that would find this episode valuable, please share it with them. Thanks.